Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out the radio version of the show every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern on WDJY 99.1 in Atlanta. We also air on a podcasting network in Los Angeles called the 405 Media. There's a TV version of the show that airs on KMVT 15 in Silicon Valley at 8 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday nights. Both versions of the show air in other states. For these show times plus past episodes, please visit the show's website at buildingthefutureshow.com. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have Andrew Mahoda. He's the CEO and founder of Newtown Connection. He's also an author, speaker, and disruptor. Andrew, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Kevin. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I, I think you have some interesting kind of advice and uh, take on, on kind of networking and, and kind of meeting people outside of, you know, a, a screen. So, but maybe before we kind of get into all that fun stuff, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with where you grew up. Yes. So I'm born and raised in a small town called Rolling Prairie, Indiana. Okay. A farm town population, population of 500 people. Wow. So I'm born, born and raised there. And um, I found my way to Florida about seven years ago. Okay. What, why did you end up going to Florida? So if, if, if anyone else is, is out there from the Midwest, they know that people get married relatively younger, you know, okay. in the Midwest. So most of my friends up there were getting married, having kids, and I wasn't to that stage in life yet. So I kind of ran out of single friends and, you know, I was almost 30 years old and I, I kind of ran out of friends and I'm like, well, my friends were married, having kids. And, um, I happened to run across a guy who's from Tampa, Florida and, um, I visited Tampa in 2010 and I moved out in 2011 just to kind of get away and start a new chapter in my life. Okay. No, that's cool. So let's step back a little bit. You, you went to university. What did you take in university and why? <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Hoosier. I went to Indiana university okay. and I actually, I actually have a degree in accounting and finance and I became a CPA. So I used to work uh, for a couple different CPA firms as an auditor. Okay. And uh, obviously, I I got away from that a few years ago. I I, I do not uh, practice accounting anymore. Okay, so walk me through your current career because you're doing a ton of stuff right now. And how did you decide to kind of leave that that space and and kind of do what you're in now? Yeah. So in 2015, I quit my job. I was a recruiter for a staffing firm, placing CPA type of people. And so during that job, I was working at a staffing firm. I was out networking all the time. And I kept hearing the same story of people who were moving to Florida from all across the world. And the same problem I, or challenge I heard was it's so hard to meet people when you're 22, 32, 42, doesn't really matter. It's just generally hard to make friends as an adult. Sure. And, you know, the, the more events I went to, I kept hearing the same thing. That's where the light bulb went off. I'm like, oh, my gosh there's so many people who have the same problem of it's really hard to connect with people today. And that's, that's what drove me to quit my job and start my company, new town connections, which uh, it's, a, it's a social club. So a little bit different than anything else out there. And <clears throat> what we do is I run about two or three events per week uh, here in Tampa Bay, Florida. Okay. And it's just, we run social events. We do yoga, we volunteer uh, brunches. We go to hockey games, football games, all that stuff. So it's just, it's a different way to go out and meet people in real life and uh, genuinely, genuinely connect with others. No, I, I think that's great. So how does it kind of work? Like, do I, I sign up and then I, I can decide which events I go to or, or walk me through kind of the platform? Yeah. So like I said, it's a little bit different. You know, we're, we're not, we're not meetup.com, you know, we're a club. So I make people go through an application process. Okay. And it's also paid. It's also paid membership too. So membership here in Florida, Tampa starts out around nineteen dollars a month. Okay. And with that, you can go to at least I would say about four or five events that are included included in that. Okay. And what what separates us is that we actually take the time to FaceTime and Skype potential applicants into the group, and we use that to hear your story. So when you come to one of our events, like last night, we had a we had a big rooftop social in Tampa with about you know, a little over a hundred people. Okay. Very cool. And we use this information. Uh, yeah. So we use this information that when we FaceTime or Skype, you hear your story. You're like, Hey, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Uh, I work in finance. I'm 25 and I live in downtown Tampa. And I'm just looking to meet people. 
So when you come to the events, I was like, I have your, we have these stories on, you know, several hundred members of our group. And that helps us better connect people and make introductions and kind of facilitate conversations. So uh, on my team, there's four of us and we're always floating around these events. Like last night, there, you know, hundred people, four of us floating around. And we tell people if they, if they need a conversation starter, we try to give a conversation starter or make introductions. So, and, and it makes our members feel comfortable that when they do come to our events, they're welcome. They meet me, they meet the rest of the team and we're there to help them just talk to people if they, if they need help or some people are obviously are very social anyway. Um, and that just kind of helps, you know, breed, breed great friendships and, you know, relationships out of what we do. No, I, I think that's really interesting, right? Because I think, well, at least it seems like, and, and you can, I'm, I'm assuming you're in agree with this, that um, there's almost a bit of a backlash of like just meeting people online, whether it's, you know, to date or, or just kind of friendship or, or whatever and anywhere else in between that like, it, it's so it, it's it becomes like such a numbers game. Right. And if one word or something in somebody's profile kind of turns you off, like you almost like just throw them away. Right. Where that's kind of unfair in, in a lot of cases. So I think more and more people are looking to go back into the kind of physical world and, and actually meet people in person. Have you kind of found that? Hey, you, 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 hit the nail, you hit the nail on the head in that <clears throat> a lot of the people in our group, they're, they're like you said, they're, they're tired of it. Of You know, if, if you're on Bumble, Tinder, any of these other apps, that that literally becomes a job. So when you go home at night, yeah. 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you're sitting there on Bumble, Tinder, whatever, Match.com, and you're trying to meet people, but it, beca- and it becomes very robotic that, like you said, I'm, I'm there, I'm sitting on my phone for three hours messaging 100 different girls trying to connect with people and like, Hey, you know, we, you know, and like you said, people discount me or you or whoever, and just based on like, they don't like my picture or they don't like my, you know, whatever title is for my profile. So I'm, tr- I'm trying to re- bring it back to the basics of you meet people in real life through what I do with new town connections. And because we're a social group, there's no pressure. So I tell people we're, we're not a networking group, nor are we a dating service. Right. But of course, you know, you know, I, I let the, let things happen naturally. So when you come to my events, of course, there's people there to network, and there's people there to meet people from the opposite sex, which is all fine. Yeah. But I'm, I I I operate under this premise of I bring a bunch of like-minded people together who are whether you're new in town or you just want to make new friends, and you come as you are, and you start a conversation, and you kind of you, you let it play out, and maybe it leads to business, maybe it leads to a date. And you just, you just let it happen naturally. So that's kind of the magic of what I started here in, in Tampa. No, I, I think that's great. Are, are you looking to expand into other markets? Or are you just kind of staying in the, the Tampa area? Yeah, so the vision, I, I have a contact over in Dallas, Texas. So we're, we're targeting to, to launch Dallas in about two to three months right now. And really, the vision of Newtown Connections is, this should be in every major city. I don't care in the U.S., around the world. It, ne- it needs to be in every city where, you know, if you're in Chicago, San Diego, New York City, wherever, again, I'm sure the same problem exists. If, if I graduate college or I leave, I leave my job and I move to New York City, I face the same issue of, great, I just moved to Manhattan, I have a job, and where, where do I go to meet people? And, you know, so that, that's the vision is as, as we continue to grow. We're only two and a half years old, so we're right. still in that growth stage. Um, is to take this to other markets. And the, the trick for me is I need to find other people who believe in what we do and say, you know what, I would love to be, you know, a, a host. I mean, I'm kind of looking for hosts or, or event organizers in other cities to help help uh, help, help Newtown grow. Because that's my contact in Dallas. She's uh, She's been in event planning for, you know, 10 years plus. Uh, so she's she's in Dallas kind of help, helping set up some of these events. And like I said, we're looking to target to uh, start there and, most likely uh, later April, early May. Sure. And then obviously, as like as this thing grows in other cities, then maybe if you're traveling for business or, or whatever, you could potentially go to one of those events, you know, if you have a night off or something in a city that you don't live in, right? Just why not, right? Exactly. So, and we're also in the process of, yeah, it's, it's a crazy time for me now. We're also in the process of finishing up our mobile app. Okay. So, and like I said, the vision there is you're on a mobile app, you can search by a city. So if I'm going to Atlanta or Charlotte or wherever, I am like, oh, I'm going to Atlanta. I find a new town connections, Atlanta chapter, or maybe there's multiple chapters there. And I'm like, oh, I'm traveling to Buckhead in Atlanta. And what's, what's going on on Wednesday night? I want to go out. 
Sure. And that's the magic of what we do is I, I'm, I'm there for work. I'm, you know, say I'm still an auditor working at PwC and I go to a Buckhead Atlanta and I go out on Wednesday and I meet up with the new town connections group there and I meet my counterpart and he or she takes me around. And before I know it, I just, I just made five or 10 new friends in Atlanta and start to cultivate those relationships of, Hey, like I'm just traveling here for work, but yeah, maybe next time I'm back, I'll, you know, give me your phone number, give me your email, business card, and uh, we'll connect from there. So that's, that is the real vision of, I want people to, to be able to travel and have these genuine relationships and friendships, not just in their local city, but other cities too. No, I, I think that's really great, man. So you also wrote a book called uh, Friend Request Accepted. What, what made you decide to actually put this stuff into a book? So I, I read Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I read that book, and it's a great book. It just happened to be written, you know, in 1936. And I, I thought to myself, like, this is a great book, but it's just a bit outdated with the language and the stories and the references. And again, like I heard the same challenge from all my friends here in Tampa Bay that it's hard to meet people. So I thought to myself that I should write a book that's kind of the modern day version of how do you go out and make friends today? Because again, I've heard it from so many people. And so that gave me the inspiration. I was like, you know what? I'm going to write my own book. And it's just, it's an 18 step guide. Um, you know, some of it seems very commonsensical, but uh, you know, with technology today, especially the, the younger, younger generation, uh, you know, there's, they're on the phones a lot and I'm trying to get people to stop looking down at their phones and look up and talk. Like I, I always encourage people, like talk to your neighbors, say hi to people, smile, wave. Uh, again, it seems very common sense. You're like, well, yeah, sh shouldn't you smile and shouldn't you wave to people and say hi? But in this, in this world we live in today, it's, it, people, they get social anxiety and they, it's much easier to look down on my phone and text people and not make eye contact when, you know, I'm trying to get back to the stage of just be nice, be genuine, just talk to people in real life. Sure. So I obviously like we, we want people to go go check out the book, but maybe walk me through a few other things that you kind of cover in the book. Yeah. So the first step is you have to find your happiness. So that's step one in my book of you okay. know, how do you go out and make make friends today. So I think a lot of us get lost and even myself included that when I graduate college that I have a degree in accounting and finance and I have to become a CPA because that's just what I have a degree in. And I think a lot of us, we go through those motions of, okay, I have a degree in marketing, engineering or whatever. And I must have a job in that field because I went to college for it. Right. So I, I first up there is, Hey, if, if you have a degree in whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like go find what makes you happy because if, if you're happy, then you're going to attract other people who are happy and you're, you're going to have this positive energy. And, and really it, it's just going to be a transformation of, you know, you as a person versus, well, I, I have a job and I go to work and I go to the gym and I go through the motions five days a week and then, then I, I live for the weekends. So I, I try to tell people like, look, you know, don't just live for the weekend. Life is short. Go out there and be happy. Do whatever you want to do. And, you know, whether you want to start a business or be an entrepreneur or do whatever, volunteer, start a not-for-profit, it doesn't really matter. Just go find your happiness. And then to me, that is the, the key asset to like drive you to you know, what you want to do with your life, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are. Sure. No, I, I think that's, that's really great, man. So for, for people that are maybe uncomfortable kind of networking or meeting new people, what do you kind of suggest to them? Because I think it, it can be really daunting. And I think a lot of people, uh, and like a lot of people that listen to the show are, are kind of in the tech space. And, um, I put myself in that category and, and, I got over my fear of kind of going to networking events, but I think a lot of people out there still struggle with that heavily. How do you actually get people to go to these things? So uh, the first step there is I tell people to think of, don't think of networking as an event because we all, we all, we all talk to people every day, whether it's at work at maybe at a grocery store or I go to church or I volunteer. So get yourself out of that mindset of, Oh, I'm going to a networking event. I, I have to like get business cards and talk to people about work. Go, go. I push people to go, go to activities that you enjoy doing. So if you're in a tech space and you like to code a program, you know, go find a club or a meetup or any, any group that has something in common with what you really enjoy, because then 
it makes it easy because you're, you're, you're going to be hanging out with a bunch of other programmers or coders or, you know, whatever you guys do as developers, whatever it is. And you already have something in common because you're at a group that does something you already enjoy doing. So that, to me, that's the easiest step is whatever you like to do, whether it's playing sports, what you do for work, hobbies, interests, go find a group that has something similar because you're going to be there with 10, 20, 50 people who you got, you're here, you already have some in common. So it's easy conversation starter. Like, Hey, you know, if I, if I go play beach volleyball, I know I'm, I'm playing beach volleyball with people who like to play volleyball. And, you know, if I'm in the tech space and I, again, if I go into a, a coding school or coding meetup group or whatever, you already know you're hanging out with other coders and you can, you can easily start a conversation with, you know, whatever you guys have in common. So sure. I would start there. And secondarily, when, 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 if you do go to a networking group or networking event, I tell people that they should not ask the question of what do you do first? Okay. Because a lot of us, a lot of us have never, myself included, uh, in college, there was never a course on networking. So, you know, when, when I had a job, a full-time job at a corporation staffing firm, they said, Andrew, you have to go out and network. And that was all they told me. And you, when you go to these networking events, most people say, hey, you know, nice, nice to meet you, Kevin. What do you do? Sure. And it's a, it's a very cold question. So when I do these teachings, and I do, you know, speeches to companies and I teach people how to network. I tell them, I was like, look, it's six o'clock, it's seven o'clock at night. No one really wants to talk about work. So don't ask right off the bat. What do you do? Because it comes off very cold and it's just, a, it's just a very generic question. So, you know, get, come up with something that fits your line or like who you are as a person, you know, maybe it's your first time here. And I always, I throw things up in, in, in the air to kind of start a conversation. If I just meet you, I was like, Hey, Kevin, you know, th this is my first time here. I, I don't know anyone. And maybe it's your 10th time here. You're like, Oh my gosh, Andrew, it's your first time here. Let me introduce you to a few, uh, to a few people. So oh, interesting. Okay. don't be afraid. Okay. Don't be afraid to like throw things out there and like hope some of it sticks where you say like, it's my first event or I don't know anyone. And hopefully, you know, when you talk to people and you, you throw these things out there that someone grabs onto and says, Oh my gosh, like uh, it's your first time here. And especially if you, if you talk to the host of the event, right. Uh, you know, the host, the host always wants people to come back and like maybe join the club or be a member. So if you throw this out there to the universe, it says, Oh my God, it's my first event. I don't know anyone. Can can you give me a few introductions? And hopefully you'll run across that person or two that says, Oh yeah, I'd love to help you. Like I've been here five times. I've been here 10 times. I love this group. Let me give you a few introductions. So you, you throw that out there like, Hey, can you give me a few introductions? And then maybe Joe Smith is going to lead you out there and say, Hey, you know, Kevin, I, I love this group. I've been a part of it for five years. He, he loves it so much. He's going to introduce you to other people in the group because he wants you to join too. Sure. What what about what are your thoughts on like where um, you know you you find out online like Twitter or whatever that you know somebody that you've kind of been chatting with online um, is going to be somewhere and then you're like you meet up with them in person right because I, I think that can also help too where it's kind of like the first time you're meeting in person but you've already kind of been chatting online through Twitter or some some other you know platform. Uh, and so that's a, that's a great point and that it's very critical today to ask for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So, you know, whether it's coffee, lunch, dinner, happy hour, whatever it is, people get a lot of business cards at these events or groups or meetups or whatever, and they tend to lack the follow-up. So I, I always, I, I encourage people, I push people to, if you met someone who you think you have like a, some type of connection, whether for work, personal, whatever, Follow up the next day, give them a phone call, shoot them an email, and say, hey, it was great meeting you last night. I, I'd love to catch up with you over coffee. Are you free you know, next Tuesday at 8 o'clock in the morning to grab coffee before work and talk about X, Y, Z? So that is very critical. If you're going to have these relationships and friendships, you have to have the one-on-one -on -one because when you're at an event, maybe I talk to you for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you start to lay the foundation, but in 15 minutes, like I – I, I can't I can't have a full conversation with you because we're we're at an event and you're trying to meet people and I'm trying to meet people. So yeah, I, I again I encourage people don't be afraid ask people out for coffee and lunch, and uh, especially if you have something in common or you want to talk business or personal stuff. Say hey, I love. I mean, we all eat lunch, and you know as long as someone's not too busy, they can just say sure. Like I love to meet up for lunch. Let's go to 
you know, a sandwich shop or whatever and have lunch. Sure. What's your thoughts on business cards? You think they're still really relevant and everybody should kind of carry them, especially when they go to events? I, I, I call me old school, but I still highly encourage business cards. I still have business cards. Um, you know, some people that they, they like the digital business cards, which is fine. Or even I know, I, I noticed myself that when I'm out there and some people just take a picture of my business card and then, you know, they have that, there's an app or two out there that, you know, if you take a picture of your business card, then it'll scan, yeah. you know, all that information and send it out. So I, I mean, again, call me old school. I still network a lot and I still at least, at least here in Florida, I still see a lot of people who have the regular business cards. Um, I'm sure someday down the road that it will just be digital, but I think people still like to, you know, give, I'm still giving you something. So it kind of feels good that I'm giving you my business card versus like, Hey, this, you know, I, I'm, I'm on an app and let's connect via an app. So again, call me old school, but at least here in Florida, I think a lot of people still use business cards, which to me, it's, you know, it's still, still a good way to go on, you know, get your information out there. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think it makes sense to have have them around. And if somebody wants to connect with you on Facebook or t LinkedIn or, or Twitter or something, you can exchange information that way. But it's still nice to be able to give something somebody something if they're quick or, you know, if there's a few people talking, it's easier just to hand out three or four of them to, you know, a group yeah. of people if somebody's leaving. So I, I think that's also um, really good advice. But I'm curious, what else can people do to kind of get over their fear of kind of networking? Uh, that, that, that's a great question. It's hard. It's To me, it's, it's literally taking a deep breath and walking through the front door and not, it's easier said than done. I understand it. Like you can't have the fear, but you, you got to put yourself out there and you know, again, it start, start slow, start with groups that you're familiar with or comfortable with. And you know, you, you it's, it's, it's like practice that, you know, if I want to be a great tennis player, I have to practice every single day, three hours a day, go out and practice. And, and then, you know, eventually I'll be, I'll be a great tennis player. If you want to be a great networker, you have to start out somewhere or just even talking to people that you have to go out and meet people. Like whether, again, like I said, go, go to church, volunteer, do something you, you enjoy doing. So this you're around other people and this practice it's, it's practicing the art of conversation because, Again, what, it doesn't matter where you're at church or you're volunteering for Habitat for Humanity. You have to be able to hold a conversation. You know, you, you're, it's very hard to, to make friends if all you talk about is work. You're like, well, hey, what do you do for work? Do you have a business card? And, you know, that's the end of the conversation. So practice, practice, practice. Go try different things. And don't be afraid to walk through the front door. It's, again, it's, we live in this world where it's so easy to hide behind my phone. But... At the same time, it's so difficult to genuinely connect with people just because I message you on a, an app. So, again, if you want these genuine connections, it, it, to me, it happens in real life. You have to have that face-to-face -face interaction. And, you know, again, take that deep breath and say, you know what? I tell people this all the time, that you never know what you're going to get yourself into if you don't walk through that front door. If you're like, well, I'm not going to go through there because I don't know what's on the other side. I'm like, hey, it could be bad. It could be good. But at these events, if you walk into the event, if you don't like what you see, guess what? You can turn right around and just walk right out. There's no, usually it's not that big a deal where it's, a, it's an event, networking event with hundred people. If you walk in and scope it out, you're like, yeah, these are people I don't want to talk to. Then so what? You, you, you tried it out. You walked through the front door, you looked around and you're like, it's not for you. And you walk back out. Yeah. Uh, so it's just, it's just having that, having that mentality of you have nothing to lose, everything to gain. And, you know, just t take a chance. Like, I mean, it's, even for me moving to Florida, you know, I went from being a CPA to running a social club and writing books. And, you know, I, I had to step far outside of my comfort zone of sitting by, I sat behind a computer crunching numbers all day. And only until I moved to Florida, I was like, oh my gosh, my, my real calling in life is connecting people versus, you know, to sit, you know, working in Excel and writing financial reports. Sure. Um, so yeah, get outside your comfort zone, just try something and, you know, maybe you like it, maybe you love it, or maybe you'd hate it, but at least try something just to get out there and meet people. Sure. Well, I, I think the other thing too is you never know where some of this stuff will take you, right? Like you could make a connection that you could land a job or a fun passion project or or what, right? I think the, the thing that I always find interesting about even doing doing the show is like I started doing it just to get over my fear of kind of public speaking, right? And I, I know yeah. like the, the big thing is is – 
you just need to push your, you need to keep pushing yourself out of your comfort zone by like little by little, right? And so if you're so scared of networking, maybe go to a networking event with a friend that's really good at networking or a colleague that's really good at networking that already knows some some of the people at these events too, right? Like if you're a tag along and then you kind of follow them around for maybe the first event or two, you end up meeting the people that they know just because you're around them. Exactly. That's, that's a great point that, again, if you're going with someone, don't be, and don't be afraid to ask, ask for things. You know, again, if I, I, I always ask people like, Hey, can you give me an, can you give me an introduction? Especially like I said, if, from a networking standpoint, if I know that there's a C level person or someone who's going to be at an event and I know that you're friends with them. Yeah. I was like, Hey, Kevin, can, can, can you give me an introduction to uh, Mr. CFO or CEO or whoever? Sure. So you, that's the power of your network. Like I said, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who they're going to lead you to. And you know, I, I I'm a big believer in that. There's no, sh- no such thing as coincidences in life where, you know, I happen to meet one person and that one person, he, the guy from Tampa, you know, I, I met him in 2010. If I would have never met him at a tennis, I met him at a tennis tournament in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. And if it, if it, if it, if it wasn't for that one guy in 2010, I'm not sure I'd, I'd be talking to you today. So Interesting. Just stuff like that where, because again, like that one, it's not just one, it could be multiple people, but there's usually someone in your life where you meet them and they're like, oh my gosh, they, they said they gave me this great idea. And now I'm going to run with it and, you know, maybe that's going to change your life or lead you a different way and change the path of your life. So th- to me, that, that, that's what's exciting about networking to me and meeting people is that whenever I'm out here in Florida, Tampa, you know, St. Petersburg, I'm meeting people. I never know who I'm going to meet every day. And maybe that one or two people, they lead me to a different way of thinking or they lead me to start something else. And I mean, that's exciting. You know, that, and that's, 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 to me, that's the real fun of, and joy of networking is. Uh, you never know who you're going to meet and where they're going to lead you to. No, I 100% agree. And I think it kind of, it snowballs kind of like once you have kind of a break in some direction and, and you kind of chase that direction, it, it just kind of keeps going from there, right? Like one thing happens, then another thing happens. And then all of a sudden you kind of look back over the last year or two and you're like, wow, I really accomplished a lot of stuff just by kind of, you know, meeting people, right? I, I think the big thing is, is people don't really or they underestimate how a lot of these people get to do the stuff that they kind of idolize, right? It's a lot of it has to do with, they just kind of get a break doing, I don't know, like maybe they get asked to speak at an event eventually. Right. And that's kind of, that was their like goal. And then they start speaking at other events and then, you know, they start doing uh, tons of media or maybe they start going in their own direction. Maybe they start doing their own show. Like you have no idea how that can kind of lead or where it can go, but you kind of just need like one break to push you in a direction that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. And then you just keep going with it. Exactly. So that's, and like that, I'm, I'm a big believer in if you surround yourself with other like-minded people who, you know, want to push them, push themselves forward, be successful, that, you know, that's going to drive you forward in life too. And again, when you're out there networking, you're going to meet, <laughs> you're going to meet all these other people who are doing different things. And, Again, maybe they spark, like I said, maybe they, they spark, spark that idea that you've never, ever thought of, but you had that one conversation and you're like, oh my gosh, like that, the light bulb goes off in your head and now you have this great idea. And again, that, that all starts with the, the conversation that, again, it's, it's so easy to text people and message people on social media today, but, you know, you, you never know the chemistry until you go out to these events in person. And, you know, that's the whole fun of going out in, in real life of, you know, spend, spend two or three hours a week, you know, go, go out to one, challenge yourself to go out to like one event a week. And what's, you know, what's two or three hours of your life to go out to one event a week. And maybe you met two people, maybe you went five people, maybe you met 10 people. But like you said, you never know who you're going to meet. And maybe that one, one of those, one of those people, one of those persons leads you to go do something that you never, ever thought of, which again, that's why I'm here today. And that if you would have asked me seven years ago that I'd be sitting here talking to you on a you know sh- radio show, uh, I, I, after writing a book and starting a social club, I, I probably would have laughed very hard. I said, that's, that's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm a CPA. I'm not going to be running a social club and writing books. And, <laughs> sure. And, 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 here, and here I am today. So you know, it's a, that's just a crazy part of life. 
you kind of got, you have to go with life and wherever life leads you just kind of grab the reins and, uh, you know, go for a ride. No, I, I, I totally agree. You, you also do, or you've kind of mentioned that you, you do some speaking events and obviously you, you talk on the stuff we've covered already, but you also uh-huh. do speaking on time management, correct? Yeah. I'm, I'm curious to know so, what tips do you give people for kind of time management? Cause I think we can all benefit from, from that. Yeah. So it's, it's funny. I'll, 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 my, my friend Rachel, she runs a, a fintech company, and I did I did a speech with her last week. Okay. And so her, it was a great point that she goes. You know, she's another millennial CEO. She's twenty seven. Has you know, runs a multi million dollar company. Uh-huh. And I was like, and I asked, I asked her the same question. I was like, Rachel, how do you do time management? She goes, focus on what moves the needle every day. So I, I was like, you know what? That 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 is a great point that when you think about all these distractions we have in our day-to-day life that I get 500 emails, I get people, you know, message me on social media. What am I, what am I truly focusing on every day? Like I, I could spend my entire day just answering emails or I could actually focus on what, what moves the needle. And I would say, you know, your needle is different than my needle and sure. everyone else. Like I don't, I know what I want to do and you know what you want to do. So it's really having that laser laser focus that, I know what I want to do with my life. I know what I'm working towards. I have my goals. I have my vision. I need, I need to focus on that and not, not succumb to all these distractions of, you know, e- email will always be there. I'm like, yes, I sit through my emails to see what's important that I have to like respond to. But uh, it's just really, I plan my day out. I wake up early. I'm, I'm a big believer in meditation, meditation as well. That, you know, maybe every, every morning at six o'clock in the morning, I'll meditate for 10 or 15 minutes just to focus on like the task on hand for the day. And, uh, you know, again, I, I always ask myself like, wh- what do I want to accomplish today? So when I go to bed at 11 or 12, I, I can go back and look back at the day and say, Hey, I really did something today. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. So it's planning your day out, knowing what you want to accomplish and just doing it. And that again, try it. It's easier said than done. I know, but try not to be distracted by all these things we have that, the messages, the emails, the te- the text, all that stuff. It's, it's a time killer. I mean, literally, if you, if you think about it, how much time you spend every day, you know, trolling Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, whatever. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, my gosh, I, I wasted an hour or two hours of my life every day trolling stuff on social media. It's just it, and that, and that, uh, that adds up so quickly. If you think like that's an extra 10 hours a week or more that what else, what else can you, what else can you do with 10 hours in a week and beyond? And that, that's, that's, that, that's really the manifestation of how you become more productive is, you know, social media will always be there. I'm like, there's no need. I'd, I'd, I'd rather live my life out in real life than, you know, on Facebook. Cause like in Facebook and Instagram, all that stuff, I, I can sit there and troll, troll people all day, but you know, again, what's what's the point of this sitting there on social media when I can be out meeting people in real life? Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Like, I, I think the other thing too is, I also find like cutting back on on watching TV. Like, if you think about how much time people watch, like, spend watching like Netflix in the evenings or on the weekends, oh, yeah. if you even just cut out like an hour or two, maybe on the weekends of watching TV or mindless kind of entertainment sometimes and actually focus on your future doing whatever you want to do or writing or whatever it doesn't really matter you'd be surprised at how fast that time can add up and you look back in six months and and if you take an hour a week or an hour every two weeks and you you multiply that by six months that's a lot of time that you put into something right and it's part-time and it doesn't feel like it's taking over your life it, 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 yeah, again, you're, you're, you're spot on that, you know, great. I, I may have a Netflix, Netflix account and may, maybe I spend time, you know, watching stuff with my fiance over the weekend. But again, Monday through Friday, I barely, I have a TV. I barely turn it on because again, I wake up at six, I go to bed at midnight. I repeat every day, you know, doing stuff. And again, it's so, I, what's important to me is I have other, other things I worry about or focus on other than sitting on my recliner, just watching TV and be- vegging out, which again, it, it's so easy that I, I, sure I could sit there in front of Netflix and I could sit there for hours Yeah. and I, I, I can order from Amazon. I, I never, I, that's, this is, this is a challenge as a society we live in today. I don't really have to leave my apartment. 
I, I can I can order food, I can order groceries, I can order anything from yeah. Amazon or whatever. I can watch TV. I have high speed internet. What's what's motivating me to actually leave my apartment and actually go have social interactions? So you know, again, 25 years ago, like the internet was not really around, and we all as people we had to go out and do stuff because there was no internet, and yet you had to call people, meet people in real life. Um, so that's. Again, that, that's the stuff I try to bring back to the basics of put down your phone, uh, you know, focus on a task at hand and again, ha- have some real conversations with people to, uh, to get out there because it's so funny that every day, I'm not, I'm not sure if you see it too, but I feel like every day there's articles on how people are really lonely today. Yeah. That as, as a society, we are, we think we are so super connected because of technology and, but it's really the inverse that we're so lonely because because of technology that again, we all, we're all on social media. I have 5,000 friends on Facebook, you know, yay for me. But of those 5,000 friends or acquaintances, like what does it actually matter? Yeah. You know, if, if, if I don't talk, if I don't talk to these people in real life or see them in real life and who, who it doesn't affect me, I'm still, I'm sitting at home watching Netflix because I have 5,000 friends on Facebook and you know, I, I don't really talk to them. So, you know, it, it, it worries me as a person and just a human that, you know, we're, we're dividing people up even more and becoming even lonelier because I said I never have to leave my apartment. Yeah, no, I, I think that's interesting. I think the other thing, too, is people post on social media the like highlight reels of their life, right? Like you don't see <laughs> yeah. the the two minutes before that perfect photo of their life was taken where it was the disaster or whatever happened, right? Like that's the thing that I find so funny about social media is it's like you know everybody's like oh i'm so jealous of this person you're like well but do you actually know if their life is good or bad or or the other like it does it really really matter you're just seeing the like you know highlight reel of the last like 24 hours or, or the last week or two right yeah i mean it's it's just true like you you can hide you can hide it's very it's so easy to hide behind social media where like you said of Again, I, I I can post the rainbow, sunshine, unicorn, whatever, but you get that it's just, it's a facade where I put it out there and everyone's like, oh my god, you got you live such a glorious life and everything's always so perfect. But again, like no no one's really perfect. There's things going on behind the scenes that again I I don't I'm, I may be a public figure, but I don't I don't share I don't share my entire life with everyone because you know I, I try to maintain that positive spirit that. Again, if I if I have a bad day, I'm not gonna put that out there because to me that's just encouraging others to say, oh, like traffic was horrible, I got a speeding ticket, or something didn't go my way. So, yeah, but like you said, it's just social media. You can you can put whatever you want out there, and again, for me, like I try I try to remain, I be that positive spirit that encourages other people to go out and do stuff, and um, you know, I try to refrain from any negativity of. You know, especially with politics today, it's, it's such a dev- divisive, you know, time we live in where, you know, it's either black or white. There's no gray. I'm like, well, like me at the end of the day, I'm like, we're all Americans. I, I prefer to live in a society that, you know, has safety, protection and, you know, we have jobs and health insurance and all that stuff. So, you know, it's it's, it's just such a it's an interesting time to be living here in America where it's just. I know people. I, I believe in good. I believe, I believe in the good of all people, but again, it's just easier to you know. On social media, people can post all this stuff, and they can be they can be bullies. They can be negative, and you know they don't really have to ever have to leave their their house to you know confront people in real life. No, that's that's yeah, that's an interesting point, and you're right. Like it's it's easier to put out like positive than than negative, right? Because there's clearly a bunch of negative things happening kind of in the world, right? And if you can put out some yeah. positive thing or or help you know in your own community kind of with what you're doing with your your events and whatnot I I think that's really great but you also help people publish their books walk us through kind of how you help people do that yes uh, so my my book it's just you know it's on it's on Amazon it's self-published so you know it's been published through another company that I own okay so here here in Tampa Bay I have other entrepreneur friends who are either in the process of writing books or have written books. And so I have contacts that kind of help streamline that process where if you want to write a book, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want you to pay, 
ten thousand dollars like well god i got i got to front up ten thousand dollars to write a book so you know in my network here in tampa bay i i try to help people write a book get it on, you know obviously get it on amazon self-publish it and take care of the interior the cover all that stuff so um try to, so the whole goal of that is really it's just helping helping people here in in my local region here in florida of writing what they want to write getting it out there and not, not not having them have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to to get their book out there like hey you know if you want to self publish it maybe only cost 2000 3000 to like you know take care of the interior the cover right um and get it on amazon so that's that's the real vision is i i, I do enjoy pushing people to to write write books and it, 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 and the whole point of writing a book is really it doesn't matter whether you sell 500 copies or two copies it's just you have your voice it's out there you do have a book and then i, t- I encourage people here in tampa bay that hey you wrote a book now you can be like go become a speaker like you use your book as a platform to go talk to whatever you want to be the you know the person who, who's uh the expert on so um yeah so that's really the vision of what i do with that i mean i, I helped a couple people but you know, that's kind of a more of a side project of helping people write books here in Tampa Bay. Sure. So for people that are maybe listening that are looking to maybe self-publish a book, do you have any advice for them on how they could even, where do they even begin or start with? Yeah. So the biggest thing I tell people is that I, I wrote my book. It was the, the, the full manuscript was 60,000 words to begin with. Okay. And the, the, the best investment I made was I, I actually, I hired a ghostwriter to basically go through my manuscript, edit it and make it, make it into like, I mean, I, my manuscript was a 60,000 words in a, in a word document. Gotcha. And I gave, I gave it to her. I was like, here you go. Here, here's a 90 page word document. Um, can you help me make this into a real book and not just, you know, Andrew's chapters of what I want to write about. So, sure. uh, so the biggest, the best investment I made was hiring a ghostwriter um, she spent, well, I mean, together we spent about three months, uh, going through the book and editing it. We, we had three rounds of edits. Uh, she had me like add in another chapter or two. And, uh, I mean, she cut my book from 60,000 and the published book is 40,000 words. So she, so she, she, she cut a third of my book out, uh, because, you know, she's written books before she's helped other people. She's like, you know, you don't need this, get rid of it. And, um, you know, whatever else. So, that's the best advice is if you have a book, I mean, a ghostwriter is not cheap. You know, for her, I spent a few, I spent $3,000 on for her. Um, okay. but again, that was, that was three rounds of edits. So you don't, maybe you hire a ghostwriter for one round of edits to kind of help get you to that process. But, um, the, the, the ghostwriter to me was very critical, especially for someone I've never written a book. Right. And you know, if you've never written a book, I highly encourage you to hire a ghostwriter and you could probably find someone that, yeah, maybe it's only a thousand dollars that will help ghost write a book for you, like fill in the blanks or at least edit it for you. Sure. Um, yeah. So the, to me, that was that was the best investment. And you know, I, I had another marketing guy go through my book and you know help out with the cover and get on Amazon. So that cost you know a couple thousand dollars too. But um, but the ghost writer definitely, I, I highly encourage that. That 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 was a game changer to get my book to what it is. Well, and I think too, like I, I think. Most people aren't like a, a writer, right? And so just having a writer go through it and, you know, worry about sentence structure and, and making you you sound like you should in a book, right? Like, because how you talk and yeah. how you actually come across on pa- paper or in a book is quite different or it should be quite different. Exactly. And again, think. Think about my story and that again, I'm a CPA. I've never written anything of anywhere close to that. Um, you know, 60,000 words is crazy. And that, you know, I basically, and I tell, I tell people too that like, Oh, Andrew, it's, it's so hard to write a book, you know, so long. I'm like, don't, don't think of it as a job or a task. Like you have to turn out 5,000 words today. Like, it took me almost, almost a full year to go through that process. And I'm like, but if you think about it like this, that, 60,000 words. Imagine that if you write a thousand words a week for, you know, roughly a year, obviously give or take some, if you can write a thousand words a week in 52 weeks, you're, you're most likely will have enough for a book. Sure. And a thousand words is, is roughly 10 paragraphs. So it, I, I, when I tell when I explain people to that, they're like, you know what, that's, that's a great point that 
I'm like, can, can you write 10 paragraphs every week on whatever you want to write about? And again, some weeks you're, you're, you're going to get in that flow and you're, you're going to write 20 paragraphs. And some weeks you're like, Oh, I can't think of anything. And maybe you only write five, but it's just breaking it down to a weekly goal or even a monthly goal. Like I have my own goal. Like each month I need to write five to 6,000 words every month. Okay. And I, I held myself accountable to that. And um, so don't, if you're going to write a book, don't try to force yourself. Like you don't need to like write it all at once. It can be spaced out uh, because you know, again, we all, we all have full-time jobs. We have families, kids, whatever. And I guess you can squeeze it in 500 words a week, a thousand words a week. Um, you'll eventually get to that point of having a full book ready to go. Sure. So do you schedule time in your calendar, say to write or plan your events or, or kind of how do you, do you live in kind of die by a calendar? I kind of have to just because I have so much, I'll, I'll call it insanity for, and, and, and just to keep it easy that, I mean, I've, I've run two or three events a week. Some of these sure. events like last night are a hundred people. Um, I'm also, I'm, I'm getting married in nine months, so I'm planning a wedding at sure. the same time. Congrats, man. But yes, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, it, it, yeah, it, it, then of course, like during the days I have calls, I have meetings, I have coffee, lunches, all that stuff. Sure. And I, I, I swear I wake up at six, I go, I, you know, I go to the gym, work out and I, I, I feel like I blink and the day's already over. It's like, Oh, it's seven o'clock at night. I'm like, where, where the heck has the day gone? So it's sure. just, if I, don't, if, I, if I don't have my calendar, it's so hard to keep track of what's going on. And at least I can plan better and, you know, figure out, you know, what, what events are worth my time because that's time is something people don't really cherish. I, I think in that you, 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 you can't get time back. Right. You, know, you can spend money on whatever, but once, once you burn through your day, you, you, you don't, you don't get that day back. It's so you, you have 12 hours or 15 hours to do whatever in a day. And to me, time is the most valuable asset we have every single day. So use it, use it wisely. Don't, and I always tell you, don't waste it on stupid stuff. Um, again, if you're, if you're going to go to events, make sure they're good events that fit what you want to do. Um, and, and, and spend it with, pe spend it with people you want to spend it with. Don't just, don't just go through the motions and spend it with people that you, you know, kind of hanging out in this good time, Charlie, you're like, yep, I go to the same bar and I'm hanging out with my friend, John Smith every week. And, uh, it's the same stuff. I'm like, break break that routine go do something different and you know go go live the life you want to live and it's it just getting out of that routine the motions and uh you know take a chance like i said just go out there and meet some people today and you know you never know what will happen sure but andrew we're coming to the end of the show so maybe let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about yourself uh newtown connections your your speaking events and your book yeah so, so my, my, my name is spelled, my last name is spelled M-A-C-H-O-T-A. -A. Uh, so it looks like Machota, but it's pronounced Mahota. So my website is just andrewmahota.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter, same, same handle, just first name, last name, all together. Um, our company, the website for Newtown Connections is newtownconnections.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. You can search Facebook Newtown Connections um, to really... I mean, I'm, I'm on Instagram as well, but usually Facebook is probably the best place uh, you can, between me and Newtown Connections uh, to search for us. Um, the, web, the websites are great too, but yeah, face, Facebook is our, is our main platform for social media today. Perfect, Andrew. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time in your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you, and have a good rest of your day. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. You too, Kevin. Thanks, man. We'll talk soon. Okay, you got bye. It. Thanks for listening. Please visit the show's website at buildingthefutureshow.com. Also check us out on Facebook at Building the Future Show and follow us on Twitter at Building Show. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check him out at electricmantra.com and keep building the future.